Um, okay, so now let's move on to something called probability density. Uh, so assume that you have a spread of your data. So you have um, lots of different data points, okay? So if you have a lot of different data points that are represented by x um, and each data point has a certain probability associated with it, then you get something like this. This is called a bell curve. Um, it's called a bell curve because it looks like a bell, right? right? Uh, those of you who are old like me would remember that there were bells that kind of looked like this. Um, you know, you ring them, dun dun dun, um, and they're bells. So this kind of looks like a bell, so they call it the bell curve. Um, but the point is, if you have a distribution of x's and associated probabilities, what I mean by that is an x value over here has a probability associated with it over here. Similarly, an x value over here has a probability associated with it over here. Um, and any x value that's over here, um, it has the highest probability associated with it. So that's what the mean is. It's, it's a value with the highest probability associated with itself. But the point is, um, if I have a bell curve like this and a distribution like this, um, if I have a continuous distribution, then it turns out that I can also find the probability between any two x values. So let's say I want to find the probability between this point and this point. So I call the first point x, and then I say the distance between them is just dx. It's a small number, and I call that small number dx. So therefore, the second point must be x plus dx, right? You went from x and you added a little bit of dx and then you reach the second point which is x plus dx. So say I wanted to find the probability between x and x plus dx. Well the formula is simply you find the area under the curve um, between that point. So those of you who remember basic calculus, you will recall that the area under a curve is given by the integral between the two points that you're interested, right? So here, if I'm interested between x and x plus dx, I integrate p of x between these two regions um, uh, in the space element d of x, okay? More generally, if I'm interested in finding the probability between any two arbitrary points A um, and then let's say B, the A and B could be anywhere on the graph, then the probability between A and B is simply given by the integral um, of P of X dx between A and B, okay? Um, and then there are usually tables that are present that help you find different integrals. So essentially integrals won't be too hard in our course, but the point is um, that if you want to find the probability density or the probability associated with a density, then you have to use integrals. So if I integrate this whole curve, this bell curve, from minus infinity to positive infinity, meaning it's two extreme ends, then I estimate and I know for a fact that the total probability should equal to 100% um, or 1. So the, this is called the normalization condition. We set up our bell curves in such a way that if I integrate from both of the boundaries, then I get a 100% probability or 1. So this is something that we use Usually need to do. We need to set up our bell curves in such a way that the probabilities are normalized, meaning that if you integrate from one end to the other, the total probability should be one or a hundred percent. Okay, there's nothing wrong in having um, a bell curve in which the probability might be over one or under one, but the point is that's very hard to work with. So what we'll do is we'll normalize our data. We'll, we'll make it in such a fashion that if I integrate from one end to the other, other I should get a probability of one, okay? So this is the normalization condition. Now let's say I want to find my average value x um, in this graph. Well, remember, the average value is just given by the first moment of distribution. The first moment of distribution was x of j multiplied by px of j, and you added all of those um, x of j's and p of j's to, you multiplied them together, and then you added each component. 
So it turns out you can convert this to integrals. Sigma signs get replaced with integrals. Um, so if I want to find the average value between a and b of x, then this is the formula I use. I use, I convert x of j into a simple x. Um, that's a variable that I represent it. And p x of j with just a probability variable p of x. So the average value of x is given by x multiplied by the probability associated with x multiplied by dx um, within some space region a and b. Similarly, if I want to find the second moment um, of distribution, then all I do is I look at the formula. What well, the formula was is that the second moment of distribution is just the square of x multiplied by the probability p x of j. If I want to convert that to integrals, I convert the sigma to an integral sign. If I'm looking at the um, average value of x squared between a and b, then basically I go x squared multiplied by p of x times d of x, and that gives me um, my formula for it. Similarly, sigma x squared was given by x minus um, you know, our data, remember, variance was just a measure of spread from the mean. So you took your data point x, you subtracted it from the mean, you squared it, then you multiplied it by p of x. So basically, if you want to convert that to the language of integrals, sigma gets replaced with a, um, with a integral sign, x is good as it is. Um, if the mean, the mean is still the mean, x, x bar, or sorry, it's, it's this x um, with these weird looking brackets, then you square that term, you multiply it by p of x, you, you, take, you take this probability in some spatial element d of x, um, and then you basically add all of those elements together within some bigger region a and b. Um, so basically that's where you get this from. So it's really not that hard. If you remember um, our lesson on first moment, second moment, then you'll be able to convert it into integrals pretty easily. So let's do an example to probably help us consider this. Um, so consider a piecewise, consider a uniform distribution. A uniform distribution is just another word for the bell curve. Or sorry, a uniform distribution is, could be a different, another word for bell curve, but here it doesn't mean the bell curve. So a uniform distribution is just a distribution that's evenly spaced out. So consider a uniform distribution given by the following piecewise function. So a piecewise function is just a function with different elements, different parts to it. So it has different pieces. So this piecewise function tells me that the value of p of x um, whenever x is between two points a and b, a and b are probably some numbers, so when x is between these two numbers, p of x is always equal to some constant a, meaning that between a and b, the value of p of x is the same and it's some constant a, okay? And everywhere else, everywhere else, that means x is under a and x is more than b, the value of p of x is just zero. Okay, that's what the piecewise function is telling me. That otherwise, the probability is zero. Between a and b, the probability is just a. So the question is, what is the value of a? And then other questions that arise um, are basically, what is the value of the average value of x? What's the second moment of distribution? What is the variance? And what is the uh, standard deviation? So this is a very easy question. It might seem hard, but it's really not. First, we can graph this. So basically, the piecewise function told me that between a and b, the probability is just some value a, okay? And everywhere else, it's the probability is just zero. So we have a normalization condition that if I take my two boundaries and I integrate um, between these two boundaries, if I integrate the function p of x, then I should get a total probability of 100% or 1, okay? So this is a normalization condition that p of x has to be a normalizable function.
So I normalize P of X, um, and this is the normalization condition, and then I just need to substitute for the variables. Well, P of X between A and B is just equal to A, right? So what I can do is A is a constant, so I pull A out of the integration sign. Well, that leaves me with A, integrate A and B, of just d of x. Well, I can also imagine that, you know, between that d and x, there's a 1. Um, and recall, x to the exponent 0 is equal to 1. In fact, anything to the exponent 0 is equal to 1. So I say that there's some hidden, uh, from plain sight, there's a hidden x to the exponent 0 there. So because there's a hidden x to the exponent 0, I can integrate this. Remember, um, simply an integration of x to the exponent n, n could also be 0, is just x to the exponent n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So if I integrate that, um, I get, I get that, okay, so then I get um, x to the exponent 0, which is, so then I'm going to get x to the exponent n plus 1, n is 0 plus 1, divided by 0 plus 1, right? That would give me 1 and 1, right? So I'm left with a to the exponent of a multiplied by um, x, um, and the upper and lower limits are a and b. So remember, once you're solving your integrations, um, the formula that you use is upper limit minus lower limit. So then I'm left with a, b minus a, which is equal to 1. Therefore, the value of a is simply 1 divided by b minus a, where it's quite obvious that b cannot equal to a. Because if b and a are equal, then you get a divided, a is equal to 1 divided by 0, um, and that actually gives you an answer of infinity or undefined, right? You can't divide any number by 0. It's like asking, you know, if I have 0 friends, and if I want to divide 1 chocolate between 0 friends, then how much chocolates do each friend get? Well, you realize that A, you have no friends, and that's pretty sad, um, and B, you also realize that you can't divide one chocolate between your zero imaginary friends. So this is called um, a non-logical situation. So anyways, now we know that P of X, it's actually equal to 1 over B minus A between the regions A and B. When X is between A and B, the probability is a constant, but it's equal to 1 divided by B minus A. So remember, A and B are simply some constants. There'll be some numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. Um, and everywhere else, probability is equal to 0. So now we're asked for the average value of X. So remember, the average value of x was just given by sigma x multiplied by p of x, right? If I convert that to integral integrals, then I get x multiplied by p of x, and I integrate from a to b, okay? So I know that p of x is 1 divided by b minus a multiplied. So on top, I have an x from the formula, okay? Um, since b minus a are constants, I'm going to pull that out of the integration sign, and then I'm left with a simple integral of x d of x. The integral of x d of x is x squared divided by 2. Um, and the lower and upper limits are b and a. Whoopsies, I, mesh, I messed this up. Um, it's, oh, no, that's right, actually. Um, there's an a at the bottom and there's a b here. Actually, we'll go back to how it was written before. There we go, a and b. So um, I'm left with b squared minus a squared divided by 2b minus a. So remember, this 2 comes from the integration. OK, so a squared minus b squared, or b squared minus a squared, is equal to b minus a multiplied by b plus a. This is an identity, a mathematical identity um, which you need to know. If you don't want to memorize mathematical identities, you need to be able to know how to factor this. So it's all up to you. You can memorize mathematical identities. There's probably like three or four that you need to know. Or you can learn how to factor equations. Um, this is obviously something that's done at a very elementary level, so we won't be going over it unless you specifically ask. 
Okay, so then b minus a and b minus a are cancelled out, so I'm left with b plus a divided by 2. So the average value for x is b plus a over 2, meaning that the average value of x is just somewhere between here. It's, it's somewhere between these two values. It's, it's half, right? So x, the average value of x is basically halfway through a and b. So now, if I want to find the second moment of distribution, or x squared and average of that, well, remember, the formula was x squared multiplied by p of x. I convert that to integration sign. The sigma becomes uh, integral. x squared is still from the formula, and p of x is, of course, also in the formula. P of x is equal to 1 over b minus a. I pulled that out of the integration because it's a constant. Um, and I'm left with the other simple integration of x squared over dx. Remember, the integral of x to the exponent n is simply x to the exponent n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. It's, it's the exact opposite of a differential. That's why they're also called antiderivatives. So, um, I'm left with a 3 on the bottom from the integration. So I can pull that 3 out. And on the top, I just have upper limit minus lower limit. OK. I can simplify this a little bit more if I want to, but it's not necessary. So we'll just leave it over here. So now the second question, or the last question asks just, what is the variance? in x. Well, I could use the formula, I could use this formula, x minus um, x squared d of x between a and b, and that would give me variance as well, but that's a little bit of a complicated derivative, or sorry, antiderivative or an integral. So what I'll do is I'll look at the definition of variance. Remember, variance is just the second moment of distribution minus the mean squared. So I know what this guy is, I just found this out before. Um, I just found it out over here, actually. And I also know what this guy is. It's the mean squared, OK? So I replace those two, um, and I, I say that my variance is equal to this guy over here. They also ask for the standard deviation. Recall that the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So whatever I found out for variance, I take the square root of it, um, and I'm left with standard deviation. You'll see most of the time um, the, the, the equations of standard deviation are pretty daunting. They look kind of scary. But the reality is they're really not that bad, OK, once you know where everything comes from. Um, I hope this video helped. Uh, thank you, and good luck.